WTN invites you to join us for benediction and devotions from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament and Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama. With angels and archangels, with prophets and saints, with the faithful of all times and all places, we again worship you, Lord Jesus, and acknowledge you truly present in this most blessed sacrament, body and blood, soul and divinity, the one Lord, the one God, the one Savior of all. And we implore you today to protect our world, Protect our nation. Protect your church. Protect us from evil. Protect us from the scheming and plotting of our enemies. Protect all life, born and unborn, and preserve us always in your grace. Lord Jesus, truly present in this sacrament, make us saints and bring us quickly to the joys of the new and heavenly Jerusalem, where there will be no more pain or crying out, no more weeping, and no more death. 
We ask this of you who live and reign forever and ever. Kindly stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The same day, Sadducees came to Jesus, who say there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question. Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children and his brother must marry the widow and raise up children for his brother, Now, there were seven brothers. The first married and died, and having no children, left his wife to his brother. So to the second and the third, down to the seventh. After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, to which of the seven will she be wife? For they all had her. But Jesus answered them, You are wrong, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. The Gospel of the Lord. We come together for this time of adoration on the 10th anniversary of the worst terrorist attack on America, and we continue this weekend to relive those moments and those days. We continue to commend to the Lord the souls of those who died. We continue to give thanks to God for the example of generosity and service that was offered on that day. We thank God for the work of the military in protecting life and freedom. But there's one more thing we must do while we are still having this solemn and important commemoration. And that is to acknowledge our faith in the resurrection, to acknowledge our faith in the victory of life over death, not just spiritual life, but bodily life. As we proclaim in the creed, I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. We think of those who died in the attacks that day. And for those relatives and friends of those who died who are listening now, I want you to know that I have been carrying you in my heart and prayers all during this commemoration, and I know I speak for millions of others. We mourn, we grieve, and we know that we commend the souls of our loved ones to God. But I declare to you again today in the name of the church, it is their bodies too that God redeems and saves and will raise from the dead. I believe in the resurrection of the body. We stand before the power of death. We stand before those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. We stand before the destruction and devastation of acts of terror. And we stand not cowering in fear or bent down looking at the ground or overcome by some terrible evil. No, we stand there in victory. We stand there in utter confidence. We stand there facing the culture of violence and the culture of death. And we declare today as the body of Christ that that kingdom of death has been defeated. That kingdom of violence has been already overcome. We talk today and we must talk about the ongoing efforts to defeat terrorism. But brothers and sisters, we also talk about it as people who belong to a kingdom that has already won the victory. We are not just working for victory. 
We are working from victory. Victory is our starting point because Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And he is risen in his physical body. I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. You know, when some people think about the doctrine of faith that we will indeed have our bodies back again in the next life, for some of us that doesn't sound like such good news. The body has given us an awful lot of trouble. But of course it will be the resurrected body set free from weakness, set free from difficulties and pains, set free from disease. But the same body God will give you because he gave it to you forever. It's yours. It's you. It's not just yours as a possession. It's you as a person. You are just as much your body as you are your soul. We believe. We proclaim. We look forward in hope to the fact that in the next world, we will not only have a spiritual communion with each other, brothers and sisters, we will be able to hold hands. We will be able to embrace one another. We will see one another's smile. We will look into one another's eyes. We will look into the eyes, bright, alive, no longer filled with tears, no longer filled with fear or dread, but bright and alive and filled with joy, we will look into the eyes of our loved ones who have died and of those innocent people who were killed 10 years ago today. God does not play games with us. He doesn't tease us to give us a beautiful relationship here on earth, to let us experience the joy of love and a yearning for even more of it, and then to somehow deprive us of it in the next world. No. The joy that we have had here, the relationships we experience, and the beauty of life in the body is only a dim foreshadowing, a faint echo of the fullness of that joy that we will have in the new and eternal Jerusalem. Jesus asserted forcefully to those Sadducees that the resurrection is real. He said, look, God is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You follow the argument he's making, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have died. So if God is going to name himself after three persons, you better believe those three people are really still alive because he's the living God. He's life itself. So if he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it means Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even though they died, they still live. This is Jesus' argument. He's the God of the living. Yes, he's the conqueror of death. Today, September 11th, is not only Patriot Day here in the United States, but it's designated as a day of service as well as remembrance. And our president, each time September 11th rolls around, calls the nation to engage in various acts of service to our neighbor as a way of commemorating the struggle for freedom and peace that marks this memorial. And may I recommend to you, therefore, one particular form of service that it is my life's work to recommend, and that is to serve your youngest brothers and sisters, to serve, to speak up for, to work for, to intercede for, to intervene for, to save, to honor your brothers and sisters who are the weakest of the weak, the poorest of the poor, the smallest of the small, the most defenseless of the defenseless, the most needy of the needy, those children still living and growing in their mother's wombs, they are our brothers and sisters. We can serve them in so many ways, speaking up, showing the reality through videos and pictures of life in the womb, helping at crisis pregnancy centers, volunteering 
to assist those who feel that they must have an abortion and showing them that there's a better way. Getting involved in the ministry of pro-life groups in your parish, in your diocese, in your community, or organizations like ours, Priests for Life, and so many other groups. Serve. Let's not let this commemoration go by and be just a time of mourning. Let us let this commemoration go by as a time of resolve that we carry in to tomorrow, the next day, and all year long, that we will counter the callous disregard for human life that those terrorists showed and that the abortionists also show with a profound love and respect and service for the same innocent lives. You know, just in coming here a few moments ago to this marvelous church and getting ready to celebrate this service with you, I stopped for a moment at the grave here on the property of this shrine, the grave of the aborted babies who three years ago I had the privilege of conducting the funeral service for right here in this worship space where we are now. Did you know that they're buried there by the statue of the Pieta? And then there's another, yet a, yet a fourth aborted baby buried here closer to the main plaza. When you come here, visit them, pray for them, pray for all unborn, and let us pray again for our nation. God bless America. Keep us safe. God bless every nation. Make us all a beacon of liberty a beacon of life, of service, and of faith in the God who raises the dead. Amen.
Anem de celo prestitis dies. Omnere recamandum in cerebrum tem. Oremus. Deus, qui nobis sub sacramentum mirabili passionis tuae memoriam reliquisti, tribu eque sumus, it nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tuae fluctum in nobis iugiter sensiamus. Qui vis et regnas in secula seculorum. the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed, Blessed be his holy name. Blessed, Blessed be Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, through God and through man. Jesus. In the mouth of 